Hello! Welcome to today's video of Western Green Mambas. Uh, this is venom extraction from these guys. So, the scientific name of the snake is Dendroaspis viridis. These are absolutely gorgeous snakes. They have really interesting scalation where each scale is a little bit individual and different. And you can see their bright green color. Uh, all mambas are fairly neurotoxic, which I'm sure many people know. So and these guys are no exception. So a bite from these is going to result primarily in uh, paralysis or perhaps fasciculations. Um, other neurological symptoms can be things like tingling or weird tastes and eventually potentially uh, respiratory paralysis. But the venom of these is also interesting for the same reason, because neurotoxins can potentially be used uh, to create uh, pain medicine. So the idea is that if you can block the pain signal using the toxin that just prevents the neurotransmitter from traveling from one nerve to the next, that you could potentially make a drug that is a lot safer than something like an opioid painkiller. So that's kind of the nice thing about these. And I'm sure you noticed that we put the snake in a tube. Uh, we really like that technique. And those of you who have seen our other videos probably have seen the tubing technique before. We like it for snakes that really get kind of whippy or can thrash around if they get scared. Mambas certainly fall into that category. Uh, they, they don't always act that way. And it just makes it safer for the snake. It makes it less likely for the snake to be able to injure itself. And it's also a little bit safer for Jim because the snake can't really uh, twist and thrash as much. So it just is better all around. The drawback is what you're seeing right here, which is sometimes the snakes do not easily go into the tube. And this particular technique for tubing, the tube is right along the wall, and then we just have like a highly technical brick or two uh, holding the tube in place. And then the idea is to just get the snake to kind of crawl away from you, and they naturally will kind of go along the wall. And the idea is we, we have the end of the tube taped with some uh, just some duct tape to make it look like a dark tunnel. And the idea is the snake will see that and go in there because it looks like a nice, a nice uh, safe place to hide. But sometimes, as this one is doing, it's keeping its head a little bit raised. And so it just really hasn't noticed that there's a place for it to go that looks like a nice hiding spot. So it's just trying to run away. And the only solution here is to just be patient. And when he... Uh, tried getting a hold of the tail there. Uh, the reason he was doing that is sometimes you can actually get the snake to lower its head when you lift the back of the snake up. That doesn't always work so well for mambas. It didn't work here, but sometimes it does. So it was worth a try. I would like to point out that even though this is taking a few minutes and the snake is clearly trying to get away, it has not tried to bite at all during this entire time. Now there, that was a little bit more of a defensive move where the snake started to back up right as Jim was going to make the grab. And when that happened, he got out of town and the snake was a little bit like, yeah, get away from me. And, you know, I think some people might edit this part out where it's just taking forever, it seems like, and the snake is, you know, not cooperating. <clears throat> but this is the reality. Snakes do not always do what you want them to do, and no animal does. The snake doesn't understand what we want. We can't just ask it nicely to give some venom. This is the safest way for the snake. And even though it might be a little bit boring to watch, and maybe for Jim it was slightly frustrating, but he knows the snake doesn't understand. So you have to have empathy for the animal and understand that, you know, they're just reacting to what they think is the best thing for them to do. They're not trying to be difficult or honorary or anything like that. And as long as you're patient and gentle and just kind of wait it out, then eventually you'll get to what you want. So there you can see how the snake is contained in the tube. Now that does make a little bit of a gape there when he went to get the pin. 
And then he allows it to bite. I think you could see there just quickly how flexible the upper jaw of a mamba is. They actually are able to kind of pull their rostrum or their nose back when they bite. And you could kind of see it there right when the snake bit down that it was fairly flexible, which is kind of a cool thing to be able to see. You also may have noticed when that last one bit down that we had a membrane on top of the funnel. And that membrane is made of parafilm, which is just a type of wax. So it's just, you know, clean, inert. And basically for snakes with smaller fangs, so all the elapids, the mambas and cobras, those guys, uh, it gives them something to bite into. Uh, the bigger fanged snakes like vipers and pit vipers, for those we typically will just allow them to hook their, their fangs over the edge of the funnel because it there's really no need for them to feel like they're biting down into something the way these guys uh, kind of are helped by that. So that's all that is. It's not very um, difficult to use or anything like that. And I think with this one you get a little bit of a view down the tube. We couldn't get it to focus real well here, but it's kind of fun to see it looking around in there. Sometimes they don't understand when the tube is clear that they can't go out the side. I think snakes have a hard time understanding things like glass and plexiglass and things like that, or in this case, acrylic. And you can see him biting down and see some of the venom coming out, I think, pretty well right there. And then here is the anti-venom with the venom that we got. And then this is one of those snakes that was just extracted from uh, the next morning, uh, chowing down on a rat. So we do believe in feeding the snakes really quickly after extraction, either the, the next day or sometimes even the same day later on in the day. And it's our belief that if you treat the snakes right, then they will eat voluntarily and do very well, um, even while being extracted from. And you can see this guy's pretty happy with his meal. Thanks for watching, and please remember to like and subscribe if you enjoy our videos. Have a great day.